So when it comes to the future, I think one thing is abundantly clear about humans. We love simplicity. We like things to have as many features as possible with the caveat that they work well. Now, when it comes to the future of hi-fi, I think that is also true. And I think the way that the industry is leading eventually is going to be in all-in-ones that are really, really good at everything. And I think all-in-ones like the Matrix Audio Mini i3 are another step in that direction. I don't know what to call this thing, but it functions in many, many different ways. Today, I'm gonna to tell you about it, but before I do that, I need to give you a quick disclosure. Oppos, the audio store, sent this out for review. Matrix Audio had nothing to do with this review and no one is paying, asking, or otherwise influencing me to say anything good or bad about this product. All thoughts and opinions here are of course my own. So the first thing I wanna talk about here is the branding. If you go on Matrix's website or on Oppos, you'll see the Mini i and the Mini i Pro combined. Same web pages and everything. And it's not very clear right up front what the difference is between the two and you kinda of have to dig a little bit. The only difference that I could find between these two is that the Mini i3 Pro has the capability of decoding and playing MQA. So if you wanna hook this up to Tidal and you're a big fan of MQA, then you definitely can, but it's $150 more for the pro version. The standard version, I think, has all the same features except for the MQA decoding capability. Now, MQA is actually in really hot water right now with a few YouTubers. I'm not really gonna get into it because personally, I don't think this is a, a place where I have any ground to step on or anything like that, especially because I don't personally use MQA. Not because I have any opinions or proof about the sound quality of it. Uh, it's more just because as a reviewer, I think it's really difficult to judge things unless they're on exactly the same playing field. And with MQA, like with this, you have to have proprietary hardware to run it. And for my particular job, that just doesn't jive well for me. So if I were to buy this, I would buy the non-pro version. So the build is solid and fairly dense with a nice two-tone finish, lots of inputs and outputs, and of course that upfront screen. I'll talk more about that in a second. The inputs are quite versatile. You have true USB-C, though you will need a Windows update if you are running Windows with this. It doesn't work out of the box. You also have coaxial, optical, IIS, Bluetooth, and of course LAN for streaming or Wi-Fi for streaming if you choose to use it. Now this is gonna primarily work with Rune. Uh, if you already have Rune set up, this should pretty much just be plug and play and you're gonna be good to run. Uh, just about anything on this. A quick note on the USB-C. For my experience, at least with this thing, it may be a software issue, but I was not able to play the higher res versions of 24-bit. I had to bump this personally down to 24-bit 92 kilohertz, but I couldn't play max settings out of this thing off the USB-C. I'm not really sure why, but that was my experience. So in the front, this thing has two headphone outputs. It's got a single-ended and a 4.4 millimeter balance. That balance output is putting about two watts into 32 ohms, which is a lot, and then all the way down to about 500 milliwatts into 600 ohms. So this really should be able to play uh, just about everything except for maybe the most extreme examples of headphones like Susvara's. You may struggle a little bit with volume on those, but short of that, I've been able to power just about everything here just fine. Now in the rear, it not only has RCA analog inputs, but it also has RCA and XLR line outputs out of the back. Now this thing has some really cool features when it comes to the switching between these two. One, it's an automatic switch. So when you unplug a headphone, it'll play out the line outs. And when you plug a headphone in, it'll start playing out the headphones. Now it does do that, which is a fairly common thing for a lot of these DAC amp situations. But what it does do is it remembers your volume setting for your line out and your headphone outputs and it will remember your volume setting in between your single-ended headphone and your balanced headphone outputs, which is awesome. And I have even more information on that in just a second. Notably, when it does come to the line outputs, you can actually set a fixed volume in the settings. Now, notably, this thing does come with a remote that has a plastic tub, but kind of this metal faceplate, and it feels fairly dense, kind of the same quality as like an Apple TV remote, if you're familiar with that. And it's got the main features you would probably use on this. It's not gonna access everything that this amp can do, but it does have most of the features like volume adjustments and your input adjustments and even some filtering adjustments. So here's some just miscellaneous additional features that I thought were worth mentioning on this thing. If you're streaming or running Bluetooth, this will actually show you the song and artist name as well as the song progression in terms of the timeline on it. 
This is a very cool feature. It's not a big deal, but I think it looks nice. There is a more advanced settings menu where you can adjust things like your brightness output. You can even adjust your wallpaper in the back and some of your DAC filter options. This menu button is a very small button on the back right next to the power input. It's kind of hard to miss if you didn't look at the, the manual. Uh, you may not even know it's there, but it is there. And all of that is of course displayed through the front screen. Now this front screen is, it's cool, the resolution is great, but I think it's just a little bit too dark. And if you're at a, a higher viewing angle, like if the amp is on a desk and you're sitting above it, obviously, it's even darker than it normally would be. I do wish the screen was just a hair brighter than it is right now. Also out of the box, this thing has a voltage switch between 230 and 115 volts on the side of it. Now out of the box, my particular unit came in 230, which does not work in the United States. The amp doesn't start up or anything like that. So I had to switch it to 115. If you're in the United States, make sure you switch it to 115 before trying to power it up. Otherwise it's not gonna work. Okay, so you remember that thing about the headphone volume? This is a very cool feature on this thing. And I don't think I've ever seen this before, but it remembers the settings between your single-ended headphone output and your 4.4 millimeter headphone output. It sets two different volumes. But this thing also has the capability of running them together at the same time and will actually display the volume of both and you can adjust the volume simultaneously for both or unplug one, adjust it, it'll keep that setting and then you can plug in your single-ended headphone and it'll go back to whatever the single-ended headphone had for its output volume. So this is great. Two people could listen. You could easily volume match and switch between two different headphones when you're A-B testing, even though one would be single-ended performance and one would be the balanced performance, but still this capability that's on purpose and not just something that you could kind of do with some other amps is great. Personally, I really wish that I could see this on a ton of other amps. It's not a big game changer in terms of functionality, but I'm glad you can do it if you want to. So when it comes to sound quality, I'm going to give a brief shout out to a friend of mine and a fellow YouTuber, DMS, who did a review of this. And he mentioned in his review that he found that the slow roll off for the DAC filtering made a big difference. And I agree with him. Not only does that specific filter adjustment make a difference, but I do think that the other filter adjustments make a notable difference as well. Now, I will say this. I prefer the slow roll off just like him. I think it leans a hair towards the warmer side, though not totally overblown. The differences here between a neutral sound signature and the warmness of this is fairly minor and it's not really a big deal, but I do think that I like the slightly warmer uh, tilt that the slow roll off has. Now, quick note on this, compared against my D70S topping, which is a kind of a reference grade DAC, um, I didn't actually notice that out of the DAC output, uh, testing out of the A90 amplifier, that either of these DACs really had a strong pull in terms of flavor over one another. I only really noticed it when I was playing it out of the headphone amplifier of the Matrix Audio and against the, the A90 and the D70S stacked together. Now, when it comes to a more fair price comparison for a stack, I ran this against the A30 Pro and the D30 Pro, and that is an incredibly well-performing and clean stack. I did notice that the bass dynamics on the A30 was a little bit better than on the Matrix Audio, but I didn't feel like it was very far behind or far enough behind that I think a technical analysis of a headphone for my job would be impossible with the Matrix Audio. I just wanna be aware that it's a little bass light compared to uh, an A30 or a dedicated uh, DAC and amp stack. Now, outside of those two notes on the sound quality, I think the general sound out of this thing is actually really good. And I'm kind of liking it because typically these all-in-ones are fairly compromised. And I've only found a few that are very good with sound quality. A standout one for me would be the THX DAC amp from Monoprice that had a few different DAC filtering options, some EQ adjustment options, which this does not have, and decent output, including XLR headphone outputs with a lot of power and a lot of cleanliness and a lot of good specs behind it. This, I think, feels a completely different use case being, you know, a streamer and it's got Bluetooth inputs and it's got the full XLR output system. So it's made for a different user base, but I do think that this is equally as good just with some slightly different reasons for being good. But I find that performance here for a headphone output, while it's not the most power for the money, given all the feature set and the sound quality of it within its power capability, I think it's actually really, really good. Okay, so conclusions here. I don't think we're quite at the point where an all-in-one is able to beat a dedicated DAC amp system at the same price, specifically that A30 Pro and the D30 Pro. I think that sounds a little bit better. I'd say 3% better. So it is better, and I don't think that the, the all-in-ones are quite up to par with it, but they also have 
a ton of other features. They've got screens, they've got remote capability, they have streaming capability. So it's not really an apples to apples comparison. I also think if you're gonna personally ask my opinion on the MQA situation for this specific amplifier, I would save the 150 bucks and just go for the $850 version of this, which is the non-pro. Now, while I did test a little bit of MQA on this, most of my music is not MQA based. So I didn't test the majority of the songs I listened to this on with MQA. And if the performance is equivalent, like it should be with the non-pro, I think the performance here is excellent. And I couldn't recommend this more as an all-in-one, especially if you are a Rune user. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next video, my name is Josh, signing off.